Hello and welcome back to the Divine Speaker. We're going to jump right in because I'm curious where we're going from here. Now that we were all dressed, we headed back down to the stairs to find the bartender. As we came down the stairs, we were greeted by a delicious smell wafting from behind the bar. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh, boys! Ah! Shut up. You're both too noisy. Leos put his fingertips to his temples. Whoops! <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you. Really? You do it every single time. Somehow, he'd appeared from behind us and grabbed Fawn and I by the shoulders. Did you guys sleep okay? Uh, yeah, we did. Thanks so much for letting us use the room. Well, actually, I feel a little bad for what I did. Just a little? I had to sleep pressed up against these two guys and you only feel a little bad? And, well, because of that, I decided to make you guys a meal. Do we have to entertain people for this, too? <laughs> of course not. On the house. Take a seat and I'll bring it out. He disappeared back into the kitchen. Well, that's nice of him. He could be poisoning us for all you know. Um, don't you think maybe... You're trying to see the worst in people? Hey, did anyone ask you, Fern? But, uh, that's not my... Be nice. Let's just take what we can get for now. That's not my... We'll have to find a way to get some money if we're going to survive out here. Not my name. How do you suppose we do that, huh? Like those guys back in the forest? <laughs> No, of course not. We're nothing like them. You really are nothing but a goody two-shoes, aren't you? <laughs> you should feel lucky that I didn't find you earlier. You wouldn't even be here. Someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Why are you trying to pick a fight? You... Breakfast up. Wow. He laid out nearly a dozen plates, piled high with meats, vegetables, and fruits I've never seen before. This is amazing! You made all of this? I work as a chef during the weekend, so this is no big deal. You three did me a favor anyway. We'll try to find some way to pay you back, I promise. There's no need, just enjoy the food. That's enough payment for me. Well, at least sit down and eat with us. There's no way we could finish all of this alone. He sat down at the table with us and handed out plates. By the way, what can we call you? The name's Nikos. I run the place, and my brother usually does the cleaning. Does he really? You were in quite the rush last night. Are you new to town? Yeah, we've been traveling for the past few days. I feel a little bad for taking up one of your rooms, but we really appreciate it. Nonsense. Did you see that crowd? We wouldn't even get that many customers in a month, usually. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to help you guys out. Hmm. Oh, okay. What's the inn's name? What's work like here? How's life in Stagwitch? Can we ask all of this? I think we know the inn's name already. But maybe he's going to tell us more about it stuff. I have to say, oh. the sleeping ostrich is kind of a strange name. What's an ostrich? It's right here. Right here, Rain. <laughs> Funny story. The sleeping ostrich has always been in my family. The first owner, my great-great-grandfather, dreamt of this giant bird with thick legs. <laughs> and it couldn't even fly. It just kept screaming, Ostrich! Ostrich! Thus, the sleeping ostrich in. Wow. What a hilarious story. Truly, I can't stop laughing. I think it's a little funny. It's definitely a, an interesting name. Okay. We all worked on piling up our plates with food. I took a little bit of everything, since the door looked so good. 
Oh, what's this? Dragon fruit. I haven't eaten one in years. Bon looked like he was in heaven. I guess he's been living by himself, eating dried fruit and nuts all this time. Ooh, and this? They call it Saro. It's a breakfast soup from my mother's country. Hmm, what's in it? It's actually not bad. The head, stomach, and feet of a cow. Okay. It's great that I can use the parts that I usually throw away. <laughs> you serious? Put this filth in my mouth and now you tell me? <laughs> you think this is funny? It was in my mouth. My mouth! I think it's hilarious. You should try new things. I took a spoonful of the sarrow to my lips and tried it slowly. Despite what it's made of, it was actually pretty tasty. You disgust me. I mean, really, what's what's the big difference between what part of an animal you eat? I get when you're not used to it can sound disgusting, but eh. I'll try some too. <sighs> it's so good. Oh, eggplant! You like it? It's my favorite. We grew them at the orphanage at home. So now you're an eggplant farmer. Amazing. <sighs> Leos yawned with a grumpy look on his face. Apparently even mercenaries can be bad with mornings. Oh, I actually wanted to ask you something. Do you have a healer somewhere in town? We do, on the east side of town. It's not far from here. He looked me up and down. Are you injured? Thanks. We just want to get something checked out quickly. Then have a look around town. Well, if you're going sightseeing, we have one of the best beaches this side of Sid Kayim. That sounds nice. We'll go check it out later then. By now, the plates were wiped clean. I don't think I've ever eaten such a delicious meal. The food you have here, it's much tastier than my hometown. Oh? Where are you from? A really- We're from an island to the north of here. Really? Haven't met anyone from out that way before. Why did you- He elbowed me again. Vitus isn't half bad, is it? Vitus? Huh? You don't even know the name of the country you're in? Oh, <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, it's nice here. My mother traveled here from the Black Isle 50 years ago. One day, I'd love to visit her birthplace. I hope you'll get to, one day. Leos pulled at my sleeve under the table to get my attention. Well, it looks like we've somehow managed to finish all the food. Oh, we should be on our way, right? Right. Why do you keep... Ugh. He grabbed me by the ear and pulled me to my feet. See ya! If you three need a place to stay tonight, be sure to come back! What was that about? What do you mean, what was that all about? Yeah, they sent me after you. There's no reason they wouldn't send anyone else. Good thinking. But he was nice. I'm sure telling him. How many times do I have to tell you? You're too damn trusting. You'll get yourself killed if you act like that. But why does it matter where we're from? Do you know how simple it was to find you? How simple it would be if anyone else came here looking for you? You're leaving breadcrumbs that lead right to us. Um, guys... Then let them come. Showing a little bit of trust in someone isn't a bad thing. You're completely oblivious. How old are you, ten? You probably think everything will be alright if you use the power of friendship and trust. You're a complete narcissist. Just because it's what you think is right doesn't make it so. Guys, people are staring. Well, without this narcissist, you'd be dead in the forest by now. You were hired to kill me. You can't brag about that. Guys! Huh? huh? Everyone's watching. Please stop. Oh, sorry, Fawn. Is that him? Hmm? There were people around, watching us from the corners of their eyes. 
I thought it was because of the argument, but... The one with the markings? Are they... talking about you? Well, follow me. Leos dragged us out of sight, but within ear range of the gossiping group. Do you think he's cursed? Nobody's ever seen anything like it. Who knows? How... how could they know about that? I've kept it covered this whole time. Wait, last night... Maybe I, I might have rolled up my sleeves? I didn't even think about it. This is what I was talking about. You're reckless. Okay, there's... God, there's no hiding that you've been here now. I've never met anyone with such a lack of situational awareness. Um, but they don't sound like they know anything about it. And? It doesn't stop them from telling anyone who asks. Oh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Forget it. Let's just get out of here. Right. We started on our way towards the healer with a little help from a passersby. Every now and then, someone would look at me strangely. Uh. No. <laughs> um. It's a nice day today, huh? <sighs> uh. Uh. Whoa! <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, no, I wasn't watching where I was going. It's my fault. <laughs> You're probably right. See ya! And he was gone. What just happened? That boy was like a hurricane. Why am I always bumping into people? Because you don't watch where you're going. I do! Then you wouldn't be bumping into people. Whatever. It shouldn't be much farther, so let's just keep going. Well, that didn't mean anything, did it? <laughs> After a short while of searching, we finally found the healers. A small red and gold tent set by the side of the road, and a wooden sign leaned against, leaned against the entrance. The way Nikos explained it, we were expecting a hospital, not a stall on the side of the street. This looks like it. I went to part the curtain, but Leos stopped me. You don't need to hold my hand. Okay, I'm capable of going in by myself. Okay. Uh, I just noticed we didn't get to ask more questions to the... to Nikos. <laughs> just the name. Oh well. Uh, I'll look around town with Fawn today then. I should go in with Leos. Well, I'd love to do both really, but... Uh, we know which, which road I'm on, right? Not, I mean, he doesn't want to be babied, so... Well, if you're sure, Fawn and I will go scope out the rest of the town, then. Should we meet back at the inn? You're lucky. Leos disappeared into the tent, and I was left alone with Fawn. He's in a nasty mood today, huh? I don't know how long he'll be, so we might as well go check the place out. Anywhere in mind? Um... Well, I was hoping we could maybe go to the beach. I've never been before. Ooh, me either. Let's go. Along the way, we can look around the rest of the town. I got directions to the beach from Nikos earlier, so it shouldn't be a problem getting there. We left the healer behind and walked through the busy streets. The atmosphere was a lot different compared to last night. People buzzed around, chatting and hugging. Kids played in the streets, and market stalls sold wares of all kinds. Everyone was smiling, enjoying the early morning sun. Oh, look at the things they have for sale! Oh, I wish I had money to buy something. Wait, Vaughn? He was gone. I scanned over the crowd, but he was nowhere to be seen. Rain, over here! Fawn waved at me from beside one of the stalls. I jumped over to catch up with him. There you are! I was worried about you. What have you found? 
Look! Look how amazing these are! The store was filled with rows and rows of beautiful artworks and knickknacks. The whole thing looked like Fawn's treehouse, condensed to a small table. I wish I could buy him something. I bet he'd really love it. <laughs> They're beautiful! Oh, what are these? They're seashells. Vaughn touched them gently with wide eyes and a huge smile. Everything here is exactly the kind of stuff he likes. They really are beautiful. Come on, let's keep going. I'm sure they'll be here when we come back. Oh, sorry. I gently pulled him away from the stall, but I could tell his eyes lingered. Surely there must be something I can do. Only a short walk away was the beach that was so highly recommended to us. A vast whiteness with the water gently lapping at the shoreline. The sun reflected off the water, making it glisten like jewels. A soft wind blew around Fawn's hair and he tucked a lock behind his ear. Wow! I've never seen anything like this. Really? Wait... I guess you wouldn't get many beaches in the middle of the forest, right? No wonder you didn't know about them. Before I... I mean... Before I lived in the forest, I lived far from any coastlines, so this is also my first time. I've always wanted to see a beach. It's like the water never ends. It goes even further than I can see. I sat down and ran sand between my fingers. Let's build a sandcastle! A sandcastle? Yeah, we can give it a moat and a flag. Fawn sat down near me and started shoveling sand onto a pile with his hands. Here, I can teach you. He motioned at the spot next to him. First, I think we have to... Um... Make a sort of volcano shape. Uh, like this? No, no, like this. Vaughn put his hands over mine and guided them. Oh, I see. We stayed like this for a moment, examining our castle that really just looked like a pile of sand so far. Against the cool ocean breeze, Vaughn's hands felt warm. It's cold by the water, right? At least your hands are really warm. Ah, s sorry, that's twice now that I've accidentally... <laughs> I don't mind. Um, uh, you see, so next we pat it all down carefully. Now we can shape it to look more like a castle. Can we add a tower here? Yeah, the tower would look good. And then you can, um, dig the moat, if you want. I worked on scooping out the sand surrounding our castle. It was really starting to come together. This looks like a real castle. You're natural. But, um, I think I need a bit more help with this bit. Can you show me again? Sh show you? Like before? Oh, um, I mean, yeah. He put his hands back over mine and showed me what to do. Why am I even asking for help? It's not hard or anything. For some reason, I just want him to do it again. Maybe it's just because it's getting cold. The feeling of his hands over mine is comforting. You do it like this. Um... I'm going to go find a stick we can use for a flag, so stay here! Wait! Well, he's gone. Hmm. This beach really is beautiful, though. Oh! These are those things Fawn was looking at before. Seashells. I scanned over my options. If I can pick one out for him, I'm sure he won't be sad about missing out earlier. But which one? A small light blue shell caught my eye. 
It looked a little like his hair, so it was perfect. I quickly made my way back over to our castle. I'm back. I found a great stick that we can use as a flag. I hid the seashell behind my back and went to help him. Let's just stick it in the top and we're all done. Here we go. Ah! Whoa! As soon as he put the stick in, the whole thing collapsed into the moat. That's got to be my fault. I made the moat too big. Is he upset? <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I had fun. Thanks to you. Um, Lane? He fidgeted with his hands behind his back. Here, I got you this. Vaughn pulled my hand until it was laying flat and dropped a little pink shell into it. I know you were a little upset earlier when we couldn't buy anything, so I thought, you know, I could find you an even prettier one. <gasps> For once, he looked straight into my eyes instead of glancing away. He was still pink, though. I... I actually found you one as well. I thought you were the one that was upset. I handed him the little blue shell I found, and he held it in between his slim fingers. We both broke out in laughter. <laughs> I was upset because I really wanted to get you one, but this is even better. Thank you, Fawn. I'll treasure it forever. <sighs> Me too. I'll never lose it. I looked at the shell that I held on my palm, small and pink, without a single crack. It's flawless. This would make a beautiful necklace. <gasps> That's... so what yours. He buried his face in his hands and mumbled from between his fingers. I stored the shell carefully away in my pocket and stood to brush the sand off my pants. Vaughn took my hand lightly when I put it out to help him up. We should probably get back. I'm sure Leos is finished by now. But thanks, Vaughn. I'm glad we came here today. After everything that's been happening, having a break is good. Me too. Come on, let's go. Well, wasn't that sugary sweet? Ooh. When we got back, Leos was leaning back in his chair with his legs up on the table. The inn was empty, apart from him. What took you so long? We were just... at the beach. The beach? <laughs> Seriously? Uh, forget it. You, you can do whatever you want. Vaughn and I joined him at the table. Oh, what did the healer say? Apparently I am dying. What?! <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny! I'm fine. He just told me to rest up. Is he hiding something from me? I just don't know anymore. Alright. Nikos was nowhere in sight, so the three of us sat alone in the inn. Outside, a few people bustled around, the sun still high in the sky. So, what do we do from here on out? What can we do? Hmm. What do we even have to do? We might as well make ourselves comfortable here for a while. We don't have anywhere else to go. Honestly, what do you even mean by we? I only came with you because I had to. I, I see no reason to stick around. I guess so. But you can't just run off alone. Where would you even go? Um, wouldn't it be rude if we just kept staying here, though? We can't rely on Nico's good nature forever. Then what do you suggest? I don't know. Then why bother opening your mouth? Sorry. For now. Kaz? Is that you? The door to the tavern opened with a creak. Uh, huh? Uh, sorry, I think you've... Caspian! It is you! 
Wait, what? You haven't aged a day! How long's it been? I looked up from where I was sitting. An older man was standing by our table, looking into my face eagerly. That name... Where have I... I've heard it before. Um... He's not... That's it! Uh, <laughs> it has! Uh, how long would you say it's been, really? Fawn and Leos flashed me a confused look, but I ignored them. If this is what I think it is... Well, it's been a good 18 or 19 years, surely. What brings you back through these parts? Oh, you know, just a bit of travel. Say, you remember that last time we met? My memory must be giving out on me. <laughs> Whereabouts was I headed again? You're still the same old guy, after all. You were on your way to Oxumer, right? Of course. <laughs> How could I forget? Anyway, it was great seeing you again. We should catch up sometime, if you'll be around these parts. Oh, sure. I'll be around town, so drop by again sometime. The old man turned and left, and a silence filled the room. What just happened? Caspian? This is it! I pulled the book out from my clothes and set it down on the table for everyone to see. He could still be alive! What are you talking about? Slow down and explain yourself. I mentioned it a few days ago, but I never thought to show you the actual book. When I... Uh, when I was in the speaker's archive, I found so many books. I didn't think about it until now, but one was called Sid Kayam. Fawn, you said that's a city out here, right? Why would he own a book like that? Everything inside was scribbled out. Does that mean the speaker does know something about this place? But more importantly, I found this. Look at this! It matches! But I can't read it. The page before, though, I can read. It's some kind of bloodline, which I can only assume is the royal family. Or was... It ends in Prince Caspian, dated 37 years ago. Vaughn and Leos leant in closer to look at the book and listen to my ramblings. I thought that he must be dead because of what Leos told me before. And I was disappointed because it was my only lead. But if he was seen here 18 or 19 years ago, he could still be alive. But he's from Aurelia Cavella too. How would he know to come here? Maybe we weren't the first to leave. Yeah, it would have been weird if you were the first ones, to be honest. Before, you told me that he was assumed dead. Could it be possible that he lived and escaped instead? And came here? The first town outside of the forest? Um... But... They, they told me... Um... It could be possible, yes. I didn't see his body. Didn't see his body? But why did he mistake you for him? I... I don't know. Really? It's it's not clicking? We could look similar, but I'm not sure. He could also just be a delirious old man. Mm, I don't think so. I thought on it for a moment, but even if I did look like him, no one ever told me at home. Caspian. He might know something about these markings. I have to find him. But... I won't force you to come with me. I couldn't. Just quickly. Because I guess people who listen to everything will know what I'm about to say, but... So, Rayan looks like Caspian. And when the speaker um, banished Rayan, he mentioned something about his father. You know? I think it's kind of obvious where we're going with this, but, uh, oh well. <laughs> We've already done so much together. It was a real journey. <laughs> I'm coming with you. Me too. What? 
I just said... I've spent enough time around you to know you'll easily get yourself killed if you go by yourself. Unfortunately, I owe you one. And... I just want to come with you. I don't want to stay here alone. Guys... Thank you so much. And you can thank me later when I save you from Flower Boy cooking you up for dinner. What? I don't eat people! Oh, of course not. He turned his eyes back to me. The real question is, why didn't you tell me about this before? Do you think keeping secrets will help you find him? A minute ago, you were telling me I'm too trusting. And it's not like he knows everything yet. That strange thing that happened with Fawn. Um, I've heard of Oxabur. It's pretty far from here. A few days' walk, at least. How are we meant to get there if walking isn't an option, then, huh? Maybe you could hitch a ride on the wagon? Ah! Whoops! <laughs> they didn't mean to scare you. Oh, for the love of... Yes, yes, you did mean to scare them. Where do you keep popping up from? I heard you talking about Oxibor just now, so I thought I'd give you a suggestion. Traders from Oxibor regularly bring their, uh, goods to sell at the local markets and back alleys. And they return with empty wagons. I'm sure if you ask nicely enough, one will let you hitch a ride. That's... that's a great idea. But what do you mean, in back alleys? Oxibor is known for its... well, it, it's glass. Hi, high quality, tough stuff. So they have a lot of... questionable goods. You, you, you'll find out when you get there, I'm sure. I see. Where can we find them then? If you head north, towards the outskirts of the town is our major stables. They usually park their carts up there. I'm sure if you ask around, you'll find someone heading to Oxibor. Then that's where we're headed. And take this. It, it's only a measly sum, but you earned it last night. He handed over a small, jingly sack. I'll look after that. I don't trust you not to get robbed. Again. Leos plucked the bag out of my hands. Probably for the best. Nikos, thank you. I don't know how, but I'll definitely repay you for this. Sure. Come by some day and perform for me again. Of course. We said our final goodbyes to Nikos. I hope the day comes when I can repay him for this. So, we're gonna go from driver to driver, one at a time, and ask if they'll let three guys sit in the back? I... guess so? The worst they can do is say no. I don't trust you not to run your mouth again. Let me do the talking. Outside, it was cooling down as the sun started to set over the horizon. Birds jumped from branch to branch of nearby trees and sung a beautiful song. Reminds me of that strange guy last night and his pet bird. We headed north and eventually came across the village stables. They were filled with dozens of vehicles, from wagons and wagons and carts to full-blown carriages. One in particular caught my eye. Black with a gold trim and polished to perfection. Unfortunately, the driver was nowhere to be seen. Not that someone with obvious riches would let three dirty guys sit in the back. In fact, not many of the drivers were here at all. Most sat empty, the stables being nearly devoid of life. Is there anyone around? Look! Fawn pointed to a pile of wooden boxes, where a large man sat and picked at his fingernails. I'll go. No. Leos approached the man quietly and tapped him on the shoulder. Uh, we're looking for someone that'll give us a ride to Oxibor. You know anyone? He remained silent, staring into Leos' eyes, before grunting and pointing his chin in the other direction. When I turned to look, I couldn't help but be surprised. Sitting in the driver's seat of a cart was a woman with big, messy hair, staring into the distance. I know Leos told me to stay quiet, but... Uh, hello, miss? 
She casts her large eyes down at me. Yes? Uh, my friends and I were looking for transport to Oxibor, but we don't know the way. Is this your wagon? Her wagon was average looking, wooden and a little rough around the edges, but sturdy. It could easily hold us in the back. To Oxibor? She looked us all up and down before her eyes finally settled on me again. Yes, this is my wagon. Why are you going there? We're looking for someone. A friend. I see. <laughs> um, are you going to Oxibor? Me? Uh, yes? I am. This is going nowhere pretty fast. Um, miss, would you let us come with you? Didn't I already say yes? No, you didn't. Is this, is this girl some kind of... Shh! Thank you. When do you leave? I leave now. Maybe she's just a little shy? Um, so, uh, do we just, uh, get on the back? Please. We climbed in the back after her. Uh, how long does it take to get to Oxibor, miss? She spoke with her back turned to us, moving barrels and crates to make room for us. It's actually quite spacious back here. Half a day. We should be there by sunup tomorrow. I see. We can't thank you enough, really. <laughs> well, I was on my way back anyway. Um, why don't we introduce ourselves? Good idea. My name's Rain. You can call me Leos, if you must. I'm fine. Her eyes stuck on Fawn for a moment before she opened her mouth. My name is Lilas. Tell me, where are you from? M me? I... I live by myself. I mean... He lives alone, not far from here. Really? Your face reminds me of a customer of mine. Have you ever been to Cliffspire? <gasps> I... No, I mean... I... Well, that's a weird reaction. He was fumbling over his words and staring at the ground. That itself isn't much different to usual, but... You, uh... You must have the wrong guy. He's a Raelian, through and through. Leos had dropped into his palm. Sorry, Leos. I had to help him somehow. I see. Well, no matter. Tell me more of the friend you're looking for. By now, the sky was slowly darkening and stars were beginning to peek out from above. We're looking for a man named Caspian. He traveled through these parts many years ago. Caspian? I'm afraid I've never heard of him. Oxibor is a small place, so I'm sure you'll find out something. You said you sell stuff, right? Fawn looked towards Lilas. So, what exactly do you sell? Hmm? I sell happiness to every corner and hopefully, one day, beyond. That's a strange description. Happiness? That could be anything. I see. <laughs> it's about time we leave then. She climbed into the driver's seat and took the reins between her slender fingers. She pet the single horse lightly and it neighed at her touch. With only a slight movement, the horse began pulling the cart slowly through the streets. Lanterns inside the houses of Stackwich were slowly coming to life. Nothing beats the atmosphere of a town at night. Uh. What's that sound? Mm, there we go! Everything shook as someone catapulted into the back of the wagon. 
I was wondering if we're not going to see these guys. Uh, yeah, sometime soon again. Ugh. Oh, God. Uh. Yo! Another friend? Nope. <laughs> we're all the best of friends. Feel free to keep going. As you wish. Oh, for fuck's sake, what is it now? Did you not harass us enough yesterday? Hey, I'm just looking for a ride to Oxibor. Surely you have enough room for one more. You're going to Oxibor too? What for? Oh, you know, sightseeing. We're travelers. You've never heard of the Oxibor glass blowers? What a pairing. A crazy man and his bird traveling the world together. Are you keeping it around in case you get hungry? You know me so well already. You're making me blush. The bird, Vera's hop the bird Vera's hopped from his head to his shoulder, tweeting along the way. Do I seriously have to sit in an enclosed space with him until tomorrow? God, I think I'd rather walk. <laughs> More room for me, then. It's fine, Leos. I elbowed him lightly and whispered into his ear. It's just one night. We didn't get much of a chance to talk last night anyway. This is a great opportunity to get to know each other. Then you can start with introducing yourself properly. Didn't you hear? I go by Fox now. The man's eyes went to his shoulder, where his bird pecked him lightly. Quickly, he looked back to me. Actually, I was a little curious. A little birdie told me just the other day Stagwitch was filled with smoke. Apparently there was a fire in the nearby forest. Did you guys see that? The, the fire? Y you could see it from here? Oh? Were you closer to it? Yeah, I, uh... Leos wrapped his arm around me and covered my mouth. Hmm... I'm sure a decent group like yourselves wouldn't have had anything to do with it, right? Of... of course not. He smirked at us. Of course not. You just happened to arrive the next day, right? How did you... I'm glad we managed to hear the walking kaleidoscope sing, at least. Oh, what a voice. The long trip out to Stagwitch was worth it for that alone. <sighs> the bird pecked at him again, and the man glanced back towards him. Is that how it shows affection? Maybe it wants to be pet? Noticing my gaze, the green-haired man gently ran a single fingertip over the bird's head, and it stopped. You know, I also heard some weird rumors going around town. Someone with a curse appearing in the middle of the night. I doubt that the knowledge level of anyone in Stagwitch is very high, though. They're simple people. Anything slightly strange, they'll call it a curse or a demon. He eyed me up closely. A fire in the middle of a forest and someone with a curse appearing in the small town of Stagwitch. I wonder... Could these two things be connected? I... Uh, I don't know why you're asking me. I don't know anything about it. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just thinking out loud. This guy puts me on edge. He acts friendly, but it's like there's something else he's after too. It's a little suspicious. <laughs> oh, it's so rain to not notice its sarcastic tone. Come on, I'm a friend. No need to look so tense. I'm an open book. Ask me any questions you want. There's nothing I don't know. Nothing? How full of yourself can you get? Funny coming from him. Anyway, this could be a good opportunity. Ooh, what do you know about Oxabo? How did you and Virus meet? Have you ever been in love? Mmm, okay, interesting. Actually, I was a little curious myself. Your bird was named Varus, right? Where did you find him? Find him? <laughs> He's the one that found me. Let's be honest, no one could resist my charms. I don't even have to open my mouth to... Ow! <laughs> okay. 
The bird pecked him on the neck, making him jump. All right, all right, all right. I'm partial to a little music myself and play a few instruments. I'd play a few times a week outside, and I noticed a little blue bird would come and listen. One thing led to another, and Varys decided to come with me. Seduced by my music instead of my charm. Seduced? Do wild animals usually... Oh, that's not too different to fawn, really. Keeping wild animals. I... I wanted to ask, but... His eyes lit up again. Can you talk to animals? Don't be stupid. Hmm, in a way, sure. <gasps> uh, not another one. Since you guys asked me two questions, it's only fair that I ask another, right? Then my question is, have any of you ever seen a demon? A, a what? A demon. You haven't then, Red? I have a name. Leos? You know what? It's actually worse hearing you say my name. What's your answer? I never heard of him. That leaves one. Me? Vaughn's mm. hands balled into fists in his lap. I don't think I... I mean... Oh? This is interesting. The quietest one, the least likely one, knows something? No, I just... Once... I think I saw... Some kind of demon. A demon's really evil? Hmm, that's a decision you've got to make for yourself. Oh, fuck, please. Oh, dear. Oh, okay, we can ask him more stuff. Hmm... Hope we can ask everything, so... Have you been to Aksabor before? Just the once. What do you know about it? Hmm. For the last hundred years or so, it's mostly been run by the Murano family. They aren't technically in charge, but they control the glass industry. Everyone else is basically eating out of their hands. The glass industry? Nikos brought that up too. When the Muranos arrived, Oxibor glass was so rare that only the rich could afford it. They capitalized on it hard and brought glass to the general populace. They bought terrain and heavy-duty equipment and financed the other companies that already existed. They basically bought the place out. Instead of using sand from Stagwich and other nearby beaches, they started importing from the countries beyond the sea. Apparently the sand is endless there, but I've never seen it myself to confirm that. It's a little strange. When they arrived, they were already drowning in riches. Where did they come from? You're very knowledgeable, sir. That was actually a really detailed answer. I didn't expect him to be so serious. They export all over Vitus now. All the way to Sid Kayim. I answered your question, so what? now it's my turn. A group like yourselves of such varied personalities. How did you meet? Is it the whole quid pro quo thing here? <laughs> oh, I looked between Leos and Fawn. How did we meet? Uh, so... <laughs> Think quick. I met Fawn after... I started my journey to Stagwich. One thing led to another and he decided to join. Right? Right. And Red? Leos? He... Uh... I'm just along to protect them. Pay me enough and I'll do anything. Oh, really? I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Thinking on the new things that I've learned lately, there is something I'm curious about. Um, have you ever been in love? <laughs> oh, I'm suppressing laughter right now, sorry. What? This isn't really the time to... Have I ever been in love? Who asks that? <laughs> of all the questions you could ask someone like me, that's what you want to know? I shrugged at him. Sorry, I thought you said you'd answer my questions. Was I wrong? 
I messed around with a few guys when I was younger. Was I in love? Sure. At the time, it felt like it. It felt like it? You tend to get consumed by the other person at the time, but looking back, eh, it was probably just lust or not wanting to be alone. Love's a little deeper than that. Really? Can you explain it to me? He raised an eyebrow at my question, but continued talking anyway. Jeez, oh, why am I giving out relationship advice to a kid? People often describe love as some happy feeling you get in your chest when you get along perfectly with your partner. It's, uh, it's more than that. It's the choice to stick by them through difficult times, through sickness, disagreements, and all the stupid things that either of you do. That's what makes your relationship stronger. Sometimes it has to be hard and hurt a little. It's all a part of the experience. It's exposing yourself and putting your complete trust in another person. This goes both ways, too. If only one person is putting in the effort, then is that really love anymore? Sounds difficult. What about you, then? I'll be honest, this is a little weird to be chatting about so casually, but... Uh, you haven't ever been in love? His eyes hovered on Fawn for a second before moving to Leo's. You have a few handsome bachelors right here. I, uh, still don't really know what it feels like. Leos? Sounds like a waste of time. Mm. One little birdie is staying quiet. I... I haven't. Sometimes being honest with yourself is the hardest part. Stagwich was long gone now. When I looked out on the landscape, it was filled with fields and farms, with the occasional cottage or ranch. It was peaceful, watching the world go by from a gently rocking wagon. Well, it would have been peaceful, but there were too many noisy people in such a small place for it to be quiet. Oh, oh, I have a question. A wild smile spread over his face as he stretched out casually. What were your judgments? Oh? Hmm. What? You know, your judgments. What do the gods have to say about you three? I looked at Leos, but his eyes looked just as panicked as mine. We... Uh, judgments? What's that? Vaughn looked at the green-haired man with a straight face. Hmm. Stop babbling nonsense. <laughs> Fair enough. Forget I asked. Well, we've got a long journey ahead of us. Best I get some beauty sleep. Well, I don't think sleep will help with that. Well, you should give it a try, too. With a laugh, he leant backwards enough for Vera's to hop onto his chest, away from the wind. Feel free to sleep for the rest of the trip if you want. Oh, uh, we couldn't. Aren't you tired too? Not that it stopped the green-haired man. His eyes were already shut. I'm used to it. I travel overnight a few times a week. Oh, okay. So, mm. So the guy was being a bit sneaky there, trying to... To find out if we're from Aurelia Cavella, was it? Okay, so we could offer to sit in front, offer to, offer for Fawn to sit in front, offer for Leos to sit in front. Will we go to sleep then? Mm? That's strange. So... Wait, but does it mean we say Fawn go sit with a lady? That's kind of weird, isn't it? I don't get this choice. Um, like, is this, is this a fawn road choice or not? <laughs> Seems a bit strange for me. But we're basically saying like, who is going to stay awake with her, right? Then I would go. Eh. How about I join you up front for a while? You three can get some rest first. Be my guest. 
Are you sure? Aren't you worn out too? I'm fine for now. I'll make sure to get sleep when I get tired. Leos leaned and close to my ear. Try to be more careful with your words. He might look like he's sleeping, but I don't trust it. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. I mean, honestly, I don't think he wants to harm us, but like, yeah, he's being sneaky, definitely. I climbed up front and joined Lila's. Hey. Hello. Hmm, what to talk about? We sat in silence for a few minutes, but it didn't feel awkward. I think she's a woman of few words. So, uh, I was wondering, how long have you been driving this wagon? This one? The last three years. They've been the happiest years of my life. Really? What did you do before then? Before, I attended the local school in Oxibor. As the years went by, I found it wasn't for me. It wasn't? I felt lost. I felt like every single person around me was succeeding, and I was the only person stuck in the same place. But I didn't want to be a disappointment. My family put everything into my education. All of their savings were gone. They told me I would be the one to bring them glory and happiness. I felt the weight of their expectations on my shoulders every day. So, I stayed in school for another year. By the end of it, my friends and family told me I looked empty. At the time, I wasn't sure what an empty person looked like, but I wanted to fix it. When I finally told them how I felt, they cried for me. They said that my happiness comes before anything else. So, I decided to travel. I quit school, bought this wagon, and started a small business. Whenever I can, I make deliveries myself. Did it help? She smiled slightly. You tell me. I'd probably describe her as aloof, but not empty. I guess that answers my question. Is it really aloof? Like, to me, she seemed like a bit of an airhead, to be honest. Which, uh, not a bad thing, necessarily. And what about you? Me? I, uh, I helped out in the orphanage that I grew up in all my life. Now, I guess you could say I'm traveling too. <laughs> Knowledge enriches your mind, but traveling enriches your soul. Both are important, but you have to find a balance that works for you. That's a nice way to look at it. So, what's Oxibor like? Oxibor, it's... Deep down, it's a beautiful place. Below the grime and the politics. Lately, strange things have been going on. I'll warn you now, if you intend to stay there, be careful. I poked my head into the back of the wagon. The three of them were already fast asleep. I'll tell them when they wake up. They're already fast asleep. You seem close to them, each in a different way. We all only met a few days ago, but it feels like a lot longer. I think Fawn and I get along pretty naturally. Leos and I didn't start out on the right foot, but I feel like we're gotten closer now, too. I trust them both. Don't tell Leos I told you that, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, but the green-haired guy? I don't really know him. Sorry he just jumped on board. One freeloader or five of them, it makes no difference to me. Tell me, is there a special one among them? Special? Well, uh... uh oh, okay. Okay, I was just now thinking to go back to the previous choice that sending up Leos to sit here would have maybe made it possible to talk to Fawn a bit more? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so we have, I think Leos is special to me. Fawn and I had an instant connection. Maybe I haven't met that person yet, or they're both special to me. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, now I'm torn because 
Yes, I'm very much focused on fawn right now. But, I mean, saying they're both special to me is also kind of nice. Or is that just more of a reply to say, like, yeah, we're both great friends. Mm. Yeah, come on. I'll stick to Fawn for now. I think Fawn and I understand each other pretty deeply. He feels special to me. Sometimes I feel like I need to protect him, but I think he's usually the one to protect me. That's nice. Being surrounded by people you trust is important. I wouldn't be where I am now without my special people. <sighs> you must be tired. You should join your friends and get some rest. When you wake up, we should be there. Are you sure you'll be all right? Of course. Good night. I climbed back in to where Leos and Fawn were asleep and got comfortable. Looks like it'll be a rocky night's sleep. <sighs> what a day. Time to clean up and go home, I reckon. Hello? What? Followed. Help us. Freedom. Watching. <sighs> Wake up. Hey, Rain. Oi. Wake up. I'm awake. I'm awake. It took you long enough. Were you having a nice dream? Uh... Where are we? Oxibor, if you'd woken up any of the other hundred times we tried to wake you, you would have known that already. Sorry. That annoying asshole is already gone. Left before any of us woke up. I poked my head out of the wagon. So this is Oxabor. We're very different looking to Stackwitch. The buildings were darker, and it was much quieter. Oh, where did Lilas go? She said she had business to attend to, but we might see her around. Um, do you guys think something feels slightly off here? Yeah, it's quiet. Maybe a little too quiet. Maybe everyone's still asleep? <sighs> Maybe. Not everyone's like you, though. I hopped out of the wagon and had a proper look at the place we found ourselves in. We were left in a wide, dark street, completely devoid of life. A dry gust of wind rattled windows and fences let out, let out dull creaks. The liveliness of Stagwitch was gone. Well, I'm sure there are nice people as well. Where do we start? We can't just knock on every door and ask. Follow me. How do you know where to go? I don't, but I'm sure we'll get into less trouble following me instead of you. Um, guys? Look! Fawn nodded his head to the side a little without making it obvious. When I looked back, I could see eyes. Eyes peering out from windows all around us. Are they... watching us? Yeah, something's definitely going on here. On this way. Leos pulled us both by the arms down a side alley, out of sight from those prying eyes. Why were they watching us like that? I don't know, but something doesn't smell right. I couldn't help but think back to my dream from last night. If only I could remember it properly. Followed? Watched? I glanced around in every direction, but no one was there. It still felt like eyes were on me. You don't think anyone's following us, do you? I don't know. It's not impossible. For now, let's travel down the back streets. I'm sure we'll run into someone friendly eventually, right? Don't jinx us like that, okay? 
You boys look like you're in need of some new equipment. Huh? At the intersection between two pathways, a lady with long black hair called out to us. Her clothes were tight-fitting and shiny. Equipment? Yeah, I see that whip you have there. I can tell we'll have some things you're interested in. Well, that could go one or the other way. You have things we could use? Really? Of course. Our store specializes in not only couple toys, but toys for individual use, too. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um, guys? Two-person use. Never seen such a thing. Three-person, too. If that's what you're into. Whoa. Why don't you come inside and have a look? Uh, Rain? No, come on. Could be useful to stock up a little. But, uh, don't worry, Fawn. I'm sure Leos knows what he's talking about. I'm sure he isn't. No, please, this is... Follow me. Despite Fawn's best efforts to turn us around, we followed the lady down the alleyway and into an unmarked doorway. Stairs led directly down to some kind of basement. Um, are we going to see things that I have to censor? Welcome to our love retreat. Okay. Oh my god! The walls were lined with all kinds of things I've never seen before. Robes, chains, some strange-shaped sculptures. Leos was instantly drawn to a display. Fawn's face flared up and buried itself in his hands. These, these are perfect. So, you're into whips and ropes, eh? Of course. Well, they might not be my weapons of choice, but they're invaluable. The selection at home wasn't nearly this big. Especially if you want to keep your prey from getting away. No? <laughs> and the whips. Hmm, they're lightweight, but well made. Hmm. For only the best of pleasure. I left Leos to browse the whips and wandered around the shop. Towards the back were glass bottles filled with some kind of liquid and little necklaces and bracelets. Oh, something's wrong with this jewelry. There's no way to do it up. It's just one long line of beads. Put those down! Oh my god, I can't believe we're in here. What's wrong? At least we finally met some friendly people. You don't understand. This is a sex... Well, I didn't think we'd be meeting again so soon. Welcome. Oh, Lilas! This is your store? What an amazing coincidence. You have some... interesting stuff in here. Thank you. I see Leos has found the whips. I noticed he was carrying one when we first met. Do you use them together, then? Uh... together? I guess so. Sometimes he uses it while we're together. Reed, please. <laughs> but mostly he uses little knives. They're kind of scary, but thrilling. That does sound thrilling. Make sure he takes enough care of you, too. I'm sure you'll both find many things that interest you here. I'm dying over here. <laughs> this is the story you were talking about. The job you love so much. Come on, no shame in that. Guessed when you said you sold happiness. Nothing could beat a career bringing pleasure to others. I can spread happiness far and wide, all from my wagon. Leos returned with an armful of items. What have you got there? I know a little bit of everything. Most of them seem sturdy, but I'm not sure why she'd try and sell me on the softness. Why would I be careful with anyone I'm tying up? You don't want to have a look around? No, 
this stuff, it's sex, y you know. Well, I might see if I can find anything useful. We're lucky to have some money on us this time. With Fawn in tow, <laughs> I walked around the store. A lot of the items were made of glass. What are these? Handcuffs? Seems like something Leos would like. And this? Some kind of soft ring. It's too big for my finger. Please, I'm begging you. The shape of this is kind of weird. What are these all used for? I've been trying to tell you. You use these to, you know. He clearly doesn't know. Pleasure others. Or yourself. Pleasure? Hmm. We walked back towards Leos, carrying a few items. I pointed out the whip that he was holding. Leos, does that bring you pleasure? <sighs> These? Wouldn't buy them if they didn't. Ah, huh, I see. Hm. I guess you were right, Fawn. That's not what I... <sighs> I give up. Killing me. Same. Should we buy these then? Leos handed over his assortment of items to Lilas, who slowly counted them all. Some of the things he picked looked a little strange, but I trust his decision. That comes out at 350 plumes. 350? He dug through the pouch of coins Nikos gave us last night. I'm positive there's not nearly enough in there to cover this. Uh, we might need to put a few things. You can put those in my tab. Who are... Wait, we've met before. <laughs> you could never forget such a cute face. We bumped into each other yesterday. In Stagwitch? And here we are, meeting again. This must be fate. Have I finally met my Prince Charming? Are you here to sweep me off my feet and carry me into the sunset? Anyway, you can put this all on my tab. You know I'm good for it. But why would you do that? Just imagining all the things you could do with this stuff. How could I not help you guys out? I just hope you plan on inviting me. Ah, uh, but where are my manners? You can call me Sign. Uh, my name's Rain, and this is Fawn and Leos. Not only one, but three handsome men! This must be my lucky day! So, what do we have here? You must be a tall, naughty, bad boy. And this one is the shy but horny type. And you... How would you describe yourself? Uh, me? Um... Consistent? What a strange response. Out of all the things you could have gone with. Still, consistency is important. Don't you hate when they change it up when the rhythm was just right before? Keep going with what works. Uh... You're interesting. I like you. Um, thank you? It's nice to see some new faces here. What drew you in? You must have heard of the durability of Oxaber glass, right? Oh, I heard a little. I mean, why else would you come all the way out here, right? They make the best toys anywhere. When a guy leaves feeling all good about himself after a bad performance, that's where these come in useful. These guys have one job, and they can't even get that right. What is he blathering on about? I have no clue. Alright, I'll add it to your tab. But only because you're such a loyal customer, Sign. You know I wouldn't shop anywhere else. These babies last a lifetime. Babies? What do you mean? These... I've been trying to tell you. They're all... sex toys. Sex toys? What? You didn't know? 
could you accidentally stumble into an adult shop and not realize after looking around? You know, if you're curious, I'd be happy to show you how they work. No, I, I mean, I can explain. Go on then, mouse boy. You, you use them to... To... Like babies. So fun. Well, I don't know about you, but I learn better when I'm shown rather than told. I'm sure Rain's the same. What do you say? It might be a good learning experience, or I think this might be a little dangerous. No. Um, I'm so tempted to choose the first one just to see on freak out. And no, no, come on. Absolutely not. You're not taking him anywhere. What are you? His boyfriend? No, they're not like that. Oh, so you're his boyfriend. No. Then he's up for grabs. What do they call this? Ah, oh, he's free real estate. Hmm, free rain estate. If you think you'll get close enough to even lay a finger on him, you are gravely mistaken. Whoa, I don't think I can hear you from all the way up there. How's the weather? What? Uh, um, I think Fawn's explanation is enough. This is what you were talking about before, right? Yeah. Honestly, I don't really understand, but Fawn and Leo seem worried about it, and I trust them. Hmm. Fine then, but I'll get you next time. We finished up buying all of Leo's new gear. Lilos packed them up neatly and Leo's stored what he could away. I glanced at Lilos. I wonder, would she know anything about what's going on? She does live here after all. She must know something. I cleared my throat before tapping her on the shoulder and talking to her quietly. Uh, we wanted to ask. Is it always this, well, quiet here? When we got here, there was no one outside and we could see people watching us from the windows. Oh, I noticed that too. It's not usually like that here. I thought maybe my dazzling aura might have made people hide away. <sighs> no, something's been wrong here lately. And what do you mean? I'm not really the best person to talk about it, but something sick is going on. People have been going missing. I don't know. I shouldn't spread rumors. We're looking for a man that came through here a long time ago. Caspian, right? You mentioned him before. I'm sorry that I've never heard of him. Try asking around a little. I'm sure you'll find someone who knows something. Uh, thank you. Hmm... I know a lot of people around town. Maybe I could help you out. I was planning on returning home, but I'm sure they can wait. Uh, really? That would be amazing. Bond's face screwed up a little, and Leos let out another sigh. What's wrong with getting help? I'm used to Leos being difficult, but Fawn is usually pretty easy to please. How many troublesome people do you have to get involved with? You're really inviting another pipsqueak along with us? Don't you and Mouse Boy already fill that quota? Be nice. It's alright. I know what's happening here. You're just worried I'll take your precious rain away from you. It's okay to be jealous. What? I, I, I am not jealous. Oh, really? Sure, if that's what you think. I don't even like him. I'm only here because I have to be. You're the one that chose to come. You said I'd get myself killed if you left me alone. Uh, 
How romantic! A knight in shining armor! Will you come to my side and protect me too? With your bad boy attitude and your rock hard abs? Oh, I'm in love! He ran his fingertips down Leo's abs and stomach. He didn't look particularly happy about it. Um, let's just get out of here. See you next time, Lilas! I'm looking forward to it. I'll try to catch you next time I'm close by. So, a redhead. Tell me, do you go faster? What? <laughs> I hope not. Wait, what does that mean? How can a color go faster? You know, red goes faster. Uh, okay. Anyway... Let me get this straight. The tall one's here because he's protecting Rain, but what about you? Me? Yeah. Why are you here? Uh, I don't know. I'm not very useful, but... Stop right there! Before you say anything, let me just remind you that none of us would be here if not for you. You saved my life more than once. You led us through the forest into safety. You're the kindest person I've ever met. I mean that. So stop putting yourself down. Ever since last night, Fawn's been a little off. I don't know if it was something Lila said, but it really set off a self-doubt. Better to nip that in the bud. None of us think you're useless. Not even Leos. <sighs> He's right. Neither of us would have made it this far. Whoa! An actual compliment? Well, more of a fact, really. Forget I said it. Um... Thanks, guys. I guess... To answer your question... I'm here because I want to be. Seeing him smile again made my heart feel warm. I want him to always be happy. <laughs> you guys! This is that thing! Huh? The power of friendship! I could cry. I want to be a part of it. Uh, can't I join too? Ugh, it's disgusting. I'll work my way into your heart somehow. Anyway, anyway, your name was Fawn, right? What a strange name. Are you some kind of animal boy? I... I've lived in a forest most of my life. And before then? Isn't it about time for you to answer some questions? All you've done is ask. Why are you here? Me? I'm here for Lilas' shop. I thought that was obvious. The whole trip here, I felt tingly all over with excitement. I, uh, I see. <laughs> then why were you in Stagwitz yesterday? Family business. They send me to boring places to keep me in check. I was just stopping over here on the way home. Family business? Nothing exciting, I promise. Oh, okay then. Hmm, what else to ask? So, uh, what do you do? What do I do? Uh, this and that. This and that? Various jobs here and there. Nothing special. I see. For someone so good at talking, he's pretty good at talking around questions, too. Um, so you know a lot of people around here? Yep, I try to visit every few months. I don't mind showing you around and introducing you to people. <laughs> Thank you very much. Really, we appreciate it. Anything for you, cutie? Fawn glanced between Sign and I with obvious disapprovement. Hmm... I wonder if we'll actually be able to find anyone. It sounds easy, but... Well... Who knows? With whatever's going on, it might be a little hard. Yeah. And keep your chin up. That sad expression doesn't suit you. Sorry. I just really need to find some answers. Answers? Yeah. You see ya. Alright, I'll have to stop this conversation here. Rain, you look like you need a break. Uh... A break? A break from talking. 
before your jaw falls off. Ah, you're no fun. Hey, did I ever say I was? Uh, sorry about him. Sign. He tends to get a little uh, grouchy sometimes. Wait, 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 seriously? You're apologizing for me to this guy? He's more annoying than that mouse boy. Wh what? Oh, please, speaker, have mercy on my soul and save me from this horrible fate. Let me die peacefully in my sleep and have all this be over. I don't know if I can live another day like this. Would you rather wait somewhere while we ask around? I'll leave you with this scrawny kid? No. Scrawny? This is all muscle. Have you seen yourself? You're a noodle. And that outfit. Are you an exhibitionist? A noodle? What's wrong with my outfit? I think we're getting a little off track. Please stop fighting. This is important. <sighs> Fine. I suppose I can forgive him just this once. <laughs> Since he's so handsome. <laughs> Leos? Stop pestering me. I'll leave him alone if he leaves me alone. Good. Let's see if we can find anyone that knows anything. Ooh, a look over there! We can start with them! I'm still not entirely sure why he's following us around and helping out, but I think we need to accept any help we can get. Well, looks like he's a bored rich kid and you're all good looking, so... <laughs> he pointed ahead, where a group of ladies stood huddled close, talking. Seems like a good place to start. As we approached the group, they quickly became quiet. They looked at us warily and tried to avoid eye contact. Um, excuse me. I'm sorry for interrupting, but I was just wondering if I could ask you all a question? <clears throat> um, sorry. I don't mean to intrude or anything. I'm looking for someone and I was just wondering if you've seen or heard of him at all. Good day, my lovely ladies. Surely you'd be able to answer a few questions for us? We promise not to take up too much of your time. The women looked between Sign and I and exchanged a few glances between themselves. Come on, you two. Stop acting so suspicious. We can answer some questions, but no guarantees we'll know the answers. There's strange things happening here. Is it safe to be speaking so openly to strangers? Indeed. Who are you boys searching for, then? I'm looking for a man who goes by Caspian. Or Cass? Uh... I've never heard of anyone here with that name. Neither. I'm sorry. I wish you luck in your search. But I ask you, be careful. I hope you can find who you're looking for. Thanks for the help! Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We really appreciate the help. Goodbye. Damn. He came through here so many years ago. Will we find anyone who still remembers him? We've only asked a couple of people, so... Don't be upset. <sighs> You're right. I just can't help but feel disappointed. Hmm. Maybe we should spread out. We'll find out more information. In groups of two, just in case we get lost. And of course, Rain should come with me. What? No, I don't think so. Huh? And why not? What do you mean, why not? That's obvious. Because... <sighs> See? You don't have a reason. Maybe Rain could just choose for himself? Isn't it obvious that I have to go with him? Why? What reason do you have? To keep him safe? Are you his bodyguard or something? Why do you care? No, I... I... I don't care. Fine, d do whatever you want. If you want to run off with this idiot, be my guest. Uh... Why can't we just go all together? Like, the dynamics are so fun. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. Oh well, I think I'll go with Leos to be safe. Fun, let's go together. All sign seems to know his way around town. Well. Fun. How about we go have a look around together? Uh, yes. Boo. 
You trying to say you want me to go with him? Seriously? Actually, maybe this isn't so bad. I don't mind having a tall, hot bodyguard following me around. Oh, Leos, please save me. Oh, speaker save me. <sighs> At least try to get along. We'll meet back up here later, okay? Yes, sir! Come on, good looking. Let's go have some fun! Leos glared at me whilst being dragged away by Sign. I almost felt sorry for him. Those two are quite the combination. I could think of a few other ways to describe them. But don't you think something's a little weird about Sign? What do you mean? I mean, he, he's practically throwing himself all over you. Oh, he knows what he wants, eh? You think so? Isn't he just being friendly? I don't think so. We met him in that kind of shop. He can only be bad news. Oh, come on, Fawn. What did you call it? A sex shop? Is that what he was there for? Uh, maybe... We should just forget about it for now. Let's concentrate on finding some people to talk to. Yeah. The streets were mostly empty, with only the sound of our footsteps filling the air. We walked on until we came across a young woman. Um, excuse me. Who are you? We just wanted to ask. Stay away from me! Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Please, we just wanted to ask if you've seen someone. We're not here to hurt you. We're looking for a man named Caspian. Or Cass. He came through here a long time ago. I don't know! I don't know anything! What's with the people around here? It's not like they're just scared. They're terrified. I see. Uh, thank you anyway. So... If Caspian came through here so many years ago, it's probably... It probably would make more sense to ask all the people, but then again, if everyone's hiding, it's probably not easy to find someone. I took Fawn by the arm and dragged him away from the shrieking woman. I was with her. They're all on edge. What's wrong with them? We kept walking along the empty, cobbled streets. No matter where we went, we couldn't find anyone else. But we could feel the eyes on us, from behind doorways and curtains. Ignoring them, I noticed something else. Every now and then, Fawn would look at me out of the corner of his eyes. What's up? Uh, huh? Oh, nothing. <sighs> Actually... I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for saying that about me. You gave me some confidence. Saying that about him? Oh, in front of Sign and Leos. That's alright. It was all true anyway. I'm not sure that's what he's referring to. I just want to see you happy. And... um... He stopped to think for a moment. He's been doing that less and less lately. He must be getting used to talking to people. I feel... less scared now. When we arrived in Stagwich, all I wanted to do was run away. I didn't ever think... I'd be back around... people... like this. I thought I'd spend the rest of my life in my treehouse... alone. I wish it was easier. I know it's hard to understand, but doing all of this is terrifying for me. I feel like at any moment, something could go wrong. But being next to you, I don't feel scared. Uh, oh, really? My chest felt tight, and I looked away from Fawn's earnest stare. You know, it feels like we've known each other for a lifetime already. But really, what's it been? A few days? Really, we barely know each other. 
that we've already been through so much together. I've never felt this instant connection with anyone else. My entire life. I want to protect him and make sure he can always smile. I wish we'd met sooner. <sighs> yeah, me too. Guys, you're still young. Shut up. <laughs> when I think of you being alone out there for so long... It hurts my heart, but maybe that's too cheesy to say. It... Uh, makes my... chest hurt? <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you jumped on me when I ran away from you. No! Ugh, I want to forget that! You tackled me into the ground, naked and soaking. <laughs> How could I forget? I'm still so sorry. Don't be sorry. It made me happy. <gasps> oh. What's wrong with me? My face feels so hot. It makes me kind of want to... touch him? Hey, Fawn. Yeah? Rain, don't let me down. Come up with a good excuse. Your hand looks cold. <laughs> oh no. Oh, come on. What? My hand? Yeah, so, uh, maybe I could... I softly grabbed a small hand. It was warm. Um, uh, I... I think you m might be right. My hands are f freezing. Y yeah, mine too. His hand was smaller than mine, slender with long fingers. This reminds me of the time I slipped over at the lake. Wait, what am I doing? Oh. New faces. That's rare. Ah! Vaughn quickly pulled his hand from my grasp as a voice called out to us. Just ahead was a man with dark hair and glasses, leaning against a wall and watching us. He seemed calmer than the other people we've met so far. He watched us approach with a neutral expression on his face. And those glasses, they looked expensive. I'd never seen such a fancy pair. As we got close, his eyes went wide. What are you doing in Oxabur? We don't tend to get many visitors anymore. He looked me up and down, the same astounded expression on his face. Oh, uh, we're looking for a man that came through here a while ago. His name is Caspian, or Cass for short. <sighs> Caspian? But you couldn't be. My name's Rain. Oh, and this is Fawn. Rain? I could have sworn you looked just like... Forget it. Wait, you know him? D do you know where he could be? <sighs> I know him. Or, well... I knew him. As for where he went... He looked between Fawn and I. I'll tell you. But I need something from you, too. What? We can't talk about it now. Meet me back here tonight, after sunset. That's not fishy at all. He turned around and left nonchalantly. Is this a good idea? Meeting a stranger after dark? What do you mean? Well, anything could happen. And he was a little too calm, don't you think? Hmm. Why don't we go find Sign and Leos and see if they found out anything? Okay. We cl quickly retraced our steps back to our meeting point, where Sign and Leos were already waiting for us. Guys! How did it go? Well, we found out absolutely nothing. I don't know what you expected sending me with him. All he did was drag me down. Sorry, sorry. But you can't blame me. 
I can't help that every girl along the way wanted me to introduce them to him. And I wish you didn't. How do you even know every single person in town? I get around. Um... We found something out. Kind of. Well... We ran into a guy with dark hair and glasses. Unlike everyone else, he didn't avoid us or seem scared. He recognized the name Caspian and said knows him. <sighs> Used to know him. But he'll only tell us if we help him with something. He wants to meet tonight, after sundown. Are you serious? How many times do I have to tell you the same thing? You're an idiot. You're just asking to be kidnapped and sold off. But... I think he really knows something. Sounds pretty suspicious to me. Finally, we agree on something. But he's my only lead. Yeah, that's what I've been thinking. It's fishy as hell. But if it's your only lead... Or he could be lying, which is much more likely. I also think it sounds sketchy, but I trust Rain. If we all go together, he won't be able to pull anything. We'd have the advantage of four people. Well, he was only one person now, but... What? Um, like, what What guarantee do we have that you will come alone at sundown? Please? We'll go I'm anyway. always getting pulled into this rubbish. Fine. If it's what you want. I'll come too. Wait, 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 what, why? We don't need you to come. It's pretty fun playing detective. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's decided then. We just need to waste some time until night. I still think it's a bad idea. I mean, what else could it be when you came up with it? Hey! With such a big, strong man to protect us, we'll be fine. Not long ago, you called me a noodle. I have no obligation or want to help you. Obligation? That's an interesting way to put it. I wonder how someone like you could have been indebted to someone like Rain. It's none of your business. What about our little fawn? Will you keep him safe too? Or is that reserved for your brown-haired beau? Every time you open your mouth, it makes me die inside a little more. I think that's enough teasing. What do we do until later? How about lunch? It's on me. Well, I am starving. Hit settled then. Come with me. Sign turned and started started leading the way without missing a beat. His confidence is astounding. Before I could even take a step, Vaughn took my arm. Rain, I don't know if this is a good idea. Agreed. What do you mean? You have to be careful who you end up owing. We're accepting too much from him with no way to pay him back. He wants something from us. You think so? Isn't he just being friendly? No, there's something else to him. I I think he's a lot smarter than he lets on. Hmm. Well, I can't help that I'm starving. Aren't you too hungry? Um, yeah. Come on, slow pokes! I'll starve to death before we get down the street at this rate! Ah, we're coming! Let's just go along with him and eat for now. We'll work out what to do about him later. I do think he's just being helpful, though. He's a little strange, but he seems nice enough. <sighs> Nothing gets through your thick head. I mean, I'm trusting Sign more than the other guy. <laughs> we caught up with Sign and followed him through the streets of Oxabor, and I started to notice little details I hadn't caught before. Most of the trees were dead, and there was very little greenery. Compared to the quaint feel of Stagwich, it was much more industrial looking. Colder. We were told that it was a haven for glass production. It felt like one giant factory. Where are we going to eat? I'm starving. I know a nice little place. Hopefully they're a little more welcoming than everyone else we've met. That wouldn't be hard. The people here... They're a little less than friendly. We can talk about it over lunch. Hurry up! Sign hurried us back out into the main streets. 
Again, they were empty. It looked so deserted, it was hard to imagine anyone actually living here. We're here! Above the doorway that sign stood in was a sign that said, The Lighthouse. This place is my favorite! We all shuffled in while Sign held open the door. Almost instantly, we were led to a secluded table surrounded by partitions. You could kill someone in here and no one would notice. <laughs> That's your first thought, really? Hmm. Everything was pristine and lavish. It looked a little... This looks a little expensive. Oh, don't worry about that. Didn't I say lunch is on me? I could feel the stares coming from Leos and Fawn. Something about accepting gifts that I have no way to pay back, right? I'm sure it's fine. After this, we'll go our separate ways and probably never see each other again. He might be a little over-friendly, but he seems like a nice enough guy. Just accepting lunch shouldn't be a big deal. <sighs> Thank you, then. We're all starving. I don't think we've eaten anything since yesterday morning. No problem. You know me. I'm a generous guy. Anything to help you out. No. We don't know you. Why are you being so generous? Ignoring Leo's question, Sign waved over a waiter. Uh, could you please bring us menus now? We're ready to order. Right away, Sir Sign. Leos eyed up this exchange warily. Oh, they know you by name. Thought you weren't from around here. Uh, I visit a lot. Hmm. Your personal menu, sir. Thank you. Feel free to order whatever you want. They handpicked these dishes just for me, after all. I looked over the menu. It almost seemed to be in a foreign language. There wasn't even a single thing that I recognized. What is all of this? I looked at Fawn and he seemed equally puzzled. Um... What is all of this? What do you mean? It's the menu! I... I've never heard of any of this. What? Seriously? Were you raised in a barn or something? He already told you I lived in a forest. Oh, wait. You're a forest boy. That's right. Wait. What about you two, then? Uh, yeah, I've never tried any of this. I've never even heard of them. Leos? <sighs> Me either. Well, pardon my manners. How about I just pick out a few and we can share them around? That sounds great. He beckoned the staff over and chose out a few items from the menu for all of us. He definitely does this a lot. He always talks casually, but there's a slight change in his tone when he talks to them. Like, there's some hint of authority. And the staff cater to his every whim. This doesn't look like the kind of place you'd usually share food. In the blink of an eye, numerous dishes were sprawled out across the table. Even Fawn and Leo's eyes went huge, despite being so doubtful before. Dig in! The situation was similar to yesterday morning, when Nikos laid out a feast for us. We all loaded up our plates with a little bit of everything. Wait, wait! None of this has cow's feet in it, right? Huh? I ignore him. I ate a few forks full of food before turning my attention back to the group. So, I think we should try and compile what we know about this place. Does it matter? In the end, it has nothing to do with us. We'll talk to that guy later, then get out of here. If we have any hope of finding information about Caspian, then it's here. That guy might not even know anything. It's still not our job to go around fixing everyone's problems. Whatever is going on here has nothing to do with us. Still, aren't you even a little bit interested? I know I am. I have to admit, even I'm curious. I mean, in the end, it might also help you in your quest. See? So, what do we know? We know that the town is practically deserted. But rather than deserted, they're all hiding inside. 
Anyone we've met outside has been terrified. <sighs> Lila's mentioned something about people going missing, and the town center is somehow involved. I'm here every few months, and it's not usually this bad. I chewed slowly on my food and thought about it. No matter how I turned it around on my head, I couldn't work out what was going on. We need the green-haired guy. Because honestly, the way he was talking to, to our group, he sounded like a great detective. <laughs> hmm. Yet this restaurant is operating like normal. Maybe the waiter would know something? Waiter? In an instant, he was at Sign's side. The service is impeccable. You must know. What's going on around town? Why is everyone so quiet? <laughs> he looked away with a frightened expression on his face. I'm not sure I can... I... I shouldn't talk about it, but... Masses of people have been going missing. Masses? Where could masses of people be going? We have no clue, but some of them. Some of their bodies have been turning up, all around town as if they were on display. Well, what was left of their bodies, anyway. I'm sorry, I can't say any more. Nonsense! You told us enough. Thank you. Sign slipped a few coins into his hand, and he left after thanking him profusely. <sighs> It's even worse than we were expecting. When you think about it calmly, we only have one option. We leave. There is no point in risking our lives unnecessarily. It's not unnecessary. I need to find him. No, you don't. You can live your life without him. Just forget he exists. I do. Otherwise, I'll never find out anything about these markings. <gasps> markings? Uh, that's... No, it's nothing. Oh, for the love of... You know, don't bother. At this point, you might as well tell him. With a mouth that big, it's a wonder you kept it a secret for this long. I hung my head. It's just like Leo said. I'm too reckless. But I didn't mean to blurt it out. Well... He looked on, eagerly. After checking that nobody else was looking... I rolled up my sleeve and showed him the markings that ran down my arm. So it was you after all. What? Everyone around Stagwitch was talking about a boy with markings up his arm. I had no clue it was you. Isn't this a pleasant surprise? Oh. He lightly touched the dark characters. I don't suppose you recognize them. No. But I can't help but feel that I've seen them somewhere before. That's how I feel, too. Hmm. How did you get them? And what does it have to do with finding this guy? It just... appeared one day. It was all such a blur, but I ended up exiled from Aurelia Cavella and alone in the forest. Caspian is the only name I have to go off of, but he might not even be alive. But if he is, then he might know what this means. Wait, Aurelia Cavella? You've heard of it? Well, of course. Who hasn't? With a history as bloody as ours, everyone wants to believe it really exists. A mythical city, deep in the forest, free of taints from the outside world, led by the fabled Divine Speaker, who acts as a voice for the gods. It's a fun story. <laughs> Imagine if there actually was a place like that. Wouldn't that be amazing? <coughs> what? What do you mean, a story? That's where I come from. And Leo's too. Aurelia Cavella. Wait, seriously? It's not made up? Everything you said about it is true too. The speaker leads the town and acts as a voice between the gods and ourselves. And it is deep in the forest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. He actually exists? I thought he was just a legend. No one's heard about there actually being a divine speaker in hundreds of years. 
It's true. He's really tall, with long white hair. Sounds handsome. Any way you can introduce me? Wait. Tell us the story you know about it. Why? I may yet be hiding more truths. Well... If you really want to know, I guess I can tell you. It's a long one, and it isn't pretty. At least some of it is a true story, up until a point, but the rest of it was shrouded in mystery. Or so I thought, anyway. Over 500 years ago, Sid Cain was ruled both by the king and by the divine speaker. The two would work together, with equal rights to rule over the land. People would travel from far and wide to be blessed by the Aurelian gods. The religion was spread out over most of Vitus at this point. While they seemed to work together well on the outside, everyone knew that it was tense between the king and the speaker. I just don't know why. Was the king mad that the speaker got so much attention? Did he want to rule over Sid Came alone? Anyway, icy relationships continued over the generations before it culminated in the war 500 years ago. A war? Our king rallied to remove the speaker from power and got support from all his council. He decreed that the speaker and all of the Aurelian gods were to be outlawed and that anyone found worshipping them would face death. Of course, the speaker didn't take too kindly to this, and thus continued the bloody history of our kings and their speakers. A great war that cost many lives between the believers and the non-believers. That's the end of the stuff I knew was true. Some say the speaker died there, along with most of his followers. But that's too boring, isn't it? Others say that Prince Xion, one of the twin princes who disagreed with his father and brother, left the speaker and their followers, and formed a city of their own, Aurelia Cavella. I always thought that sounded a little too romantic, but who knows? No way. Oh, wow. What? Prince Xion of Sidkeum, of course. He was... he was in our records as the founder of Aurelia Cavella 500 years ago. At the time, I thought that was strange. If we're the only civilization, then why did it only start then? Does that mean... they've just been hiding it from us? Does the speaker secretly know? I thought that was obvious by now. Is he really lying to us? Yeah. I... I don't know anymore. <sighs> we have no king in Aurelia Cavella anymore. The royal family died. History really does repeat itself. Maybe kings and speakers are always destined to fight. Are you saying that speaker could have been the one to kill them? Who knows? I'm just saying it's a possibility. I don't know anything. I don't know if I should say this, but Caspian is... No, was the last prince of Aurelia Cavella. Apparently he never took up the crown and died with his family, but... It looks like he might have escaped. That's why we're searching so desperately. Could the speaker know about this? Did he know Caspian? Sign finished up the last fork full of food on his plate and turned to look at me. Why don't we talk more outside? Okay. He hailed the waiter and discreetly handed him money. This wasn't a cheap meal. Here's a tip just for you, handsome. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The food was delicious but I couldn't help but be left with a sour taste in my mouth. As we pushed open the door, we noticed that the skies were already dark. We must have been in there for hours without realizing. So, let's get this straight. Aurelia Cavella actually exists, you got cursed or something, and you were thrown out. Then you met these two? Why exactly were you thrown out? I was told I could find out something about my markings in our archive, but it seems like that wasn't true. The speaker found me there and threw me straight out. I was hired to tell him that. I don't know by whom. Doesn't that seem a little suspicious? Did you do something to upset the speaker of yours? What? No! That was the first time I'd ever even spoken to him. We lived in completely different worlds, so I never met him before. 
Hmm. If you say so. Just sounds like some kind of setup to me. I don't think I did anything that would upset someone. Well, since you're blabbing about everything, you should also mention that I was sent to kill you. Whoa, are you still trying to kill him? No. If you mention any of this to anyone, you're dead. You can trust me. I'm the most trustworthy person around. Sure, if you were the only person in the room. Have I done anything to show that I'm untrustworthy? There's still more I haven't told them, but it's probably best if I keep that to myself for now. Even Leos doesn't know about my dreams or what happened with Fawn that night. Fawn said it was best to keep that to myself, so I might just leave it for now. Now that I think about it, was visiting the archives really reason enough for an execution? I never thought of the speaker as a cruel man before. Then again, if he knew about the outside world, would he have agreed to have me expelled? I don't know. Maybe there's something more to this after all. Or maybe I'm overthinking it. No, honey, you're underthinking it. <laughs> so all of that led you here to find a man who may have answers. That's right. Then what Leo said isn't true. Finding him is important. And I'll help you, of course. I can't just leave now when it's getting interesting. I'm like a saint or something. Vaughn stayed quiet for a lot of this conversation. I looked towards him just as he opened his mouth. Uh, what if we never find him? Then... I'll deal with that when I get to it, I guess. Let's be positive. I think it's about time to meet up with our mystery man anyway. I think you're right. I took a deep breath. The air was cool. The further I got from home, the colder it was. For some reason, I felt nervous as we made our way back to where I first met that man. Well, I think we're going to leave that for next time. Because, yeah, we already covered a lot today. But very curious that people actually know of Aurelia Cavella, even if it's just, like, a fairy tale to them. Interesting. Hmm. I think we uncovered a lot, but there's still a lot of secrets because... I mean, you can sprout already some theories why the speaker would... want to get rid of Rain. Like, I mean, I think he's the prince, basically, the next prince. But it still seems kind of suspicious how everything was done. But yeah, anyway, a uh, lot happened. <laughs> a lot of me holding in my laughter. We met Sign. Like from the uh, description that I'd um, read about him before, I thought he might be the character that I liked the least because it sounded like the type of character I'm not that into, but he's actually quite funny as well, so. That's cool. Um, yeah. But next time we're going to meet this mystery man and see how much of a trap that really is because I kind of feel it will be. But yeah, until next time, bye bye.